This special weekend episode of Deep in the Weeds is proudly supported by Mr Yum. Technology isn't here to replace interaction. It's here to be an enabler of more quality interaction. Taking an order and taking payment can be some of the most administrative parts of a wait staff member's job. So if you didn't have to do any of the admin, your job would be just to be hospitable. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. The pandemic has changed restaurants forever. An industry renowned for slim profit margins, a reliance on high turnover, and for being slow adapters to modern technology. Many have preferred to keep the manner of old school hospitality, where human to human contact, the hum of elbow to elbow dining rooms, and the energy and atmosphere that takes us away from the day to day. For better or worse, technology has become an integral part of our everyday lives. With restaurants bearing the brunt of social distancing rules, what role can technology play to enable the long-term viability of restaurants, cafes and caterers moving forward and help deliver that experience we all crave? Kim Teo is the CEO and co-founder of Mr Yum. Kim, how are you going? I'm really well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. Can you tell us what is Mr. Yum? On the surface, it's a really simple QR code ordering for dine-in, pick-up or delivery. So you can be in the restaurant, scan a QR code, order and pay on your phone, but you could be sitting on your couch at home doing the same direct with a restaurant. Um, but under the hood, it's you know re- really powerful tool and the aim is to help the hospitality and entertainment industry adapt. Like you've just mentioned in the intro, um, become more profitable and help them get their loyal customers coming back, which is a really key part of building a a profitable business in hospitality. So yeah, on the surface, super simple, but under the hood, there's um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of value there. Well, let's pop the hood and take a look underneath the surface there. How, How does it work? For sure. It's a it's a web-based platform, so it's not an app that allows the restaurants to get really high uptake and transform their service model. So because it's not an app, you can you can encourage every customer to use it. You scan a QR code with your phone camera, you view a be- beautiful visual menu, just like e-commerce, just like a online checkout experience. You add things to cart, you order and pay with all the different payment methods that you really could want. For a business, though, there's a really powerful back end with lots of thought put into the operational efficiency side. So it's not just about being able to take orders and take a payment. We also batch orders. So, for example, if you've got many customers sitting around a table together, a table of five friends, those orders come through on the one docket as opposed to on many dockets, which would be a nightmare for chefs. There's a lot of pre-order workflows around being able to order for dinner on Friday with, you know, with a family, um, being able to place that order for 6 p.m. when it's normally peak hours and kind of sell out slots of, of delivery. So, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, useful things for customers and it's a good customer experience in the back end, though. It's really trying to bring hospitality businesses into the online world and have them set up e-commerce platforms for the first time that they never really had access to before. And like you said, many of them have tried this stuff for the first time in the last six months, whether they've wanted to or not, or, you know, been almost forced into it. (laughs) Um, But I think in the long term that, you know, that that short amount of experience and that uh, little exposure to how easy it really is to use has convinced a lot of them to stay. There are many types of restaurants. Does it suit a particular type of restaurant and is it adaptable to the different models that are out there? Yeah, it's a really good question. It works really, really well in lots of different categories, which has been nice to see. Uh, Pubs and bars are an incredibly idealistic environment because usually you'd have to go up to the bar and order and if you can sit and interact with your friends and hang out with them what a what a what a much better experience and have your food and drinks be delivered to your table so the pub and bar environment was actually taking off pre-covid and a lot of operators in that space had seen it as a way to improve the customer experience and increase spend even before um you know before march 
restaurants and cafes have adopted it really well. So we work with the Grounds of Alexandria, for example. They do 60% of their orders, 70% of their orders through the Misty Yarn platform. Um, and that's a really big uh, cafe that does very high turnover. And in that environment, the operational efficiencies and the customer experience is elevated because you're not waiting for staff or you're not waiting to place your drinks or you're not waiting to, to order a second coffee uh, and the visuals bring really bring their menu to life because a lot of their food is very visual even the drinks are very visual um, so in in a cafe environment where they put a lot of effort into their instagram and put a lot of effort into their photos uh, it can you know it can make a really big difference to them too the restaurant industry has been i think you would um probably have thought this like the fine dining industry has definitely been the slowest to adopt this technology but we've got some great case studies Francie Hanks and Melbourne CBD um, Oriental Tea House are rolling it out so there's quite a few restaurants that have used used this as an opportunity to um, I think improve the overall customer experience and not and and have found a really good way the reviews coming from the restaurants are actually awesome and it's been so good to see how they've mixed hospitality and the human element with the technology and I know that is one of the biggest hesitations for the restaurant industry entertainment has been a super easy one we're doing um, magic mic come come to Semba and that's all of their Sydney shows and um and then you know Brisbane shows and then hopefully Melbourne shows when we're allowed to do um events again as well and that's you know order to the seat from you know from from the crowd being able to get your food and drinks delivered to you so look I think there's a lot of events as a particularly um, useful and useful case study where it's normally there'd be pretty long lines and you'd look at the lines and think about the gig that you have to get to and um, probably put off eating or put off getting another drink because you want to go and watch a gig. You mentioned the visual menu that is available through uh, the platform. I've got a restaurant that's around the corner from me that's got photos of every single dish and they look like they were taken in 1973 and there's you know, there's something there's something quite lovely about that, but they certainly don't look appealing. How, who's in control of the photography, and is there a standard that is um, required for every dish that's on there? That's a it's a really good question, and what we've found and what we've learnt from uh, other platforms, say compare Misty Yum to an Airbnb. When they first started, they struggled with getting uh, hosts as like you know, in their world, it's hosts, in our world, it's restaurants, to take good photography of their homes. And what they what they did in the early days was they sent out photographers to every host and they um, essentially, like, improved the standard overall on the platform. But then what happened after that is people would use what was on the platform as an indication of what it should be and then sort out their own photography of a similar quality and similar standard. So... I guess if you take that and take it to Mr. Young, we've got a great photography network in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth, all the major cities in Australia. Um, but, you know, restaurants can take their own photos as well. And so many of them take amazing photos. So we don't want to disregard that. It's completely up to them which photos they use and whether they choose to use our network of photographers or not. But we show them great examples of photography and you know that leads to higher spend and it leads to a better customer experience and leads to people more likely to buy the things that maybe they didn't think they were going to buy before so I think we it's more like the you know the carrot approach as opposed to forcing them to do something which I think doesn't really yeah it's not very scalable long term. You mentioned all the different types of uh platforms that have been launched during this time but it's something that's been happening for a couple of years now in the space can you take us back to how Mr Yum started and and why you guys created it Mr Yum started two years ago so November 18 um, actually our first venue was the 16th of November so it's two years and one day today and the platform yeah the pl and a lot of you know a lot of similar products were started um you know just around the time of COVID or a little bit before and um you know we were lucky we had a year year and a half to develop the product before um all of this happened and it, it started because 
it started first as a visual menu, so it didn't have the ordering and the payment product um, in in Mr. Yum, and it really was a consumer lens around us going out and eating and interacting, and menus just seem like Word documents, and restaurants would put so much effort and cafes and pub, even pubs would put so much effort into making their food look good and um, consumers would go on Google and Instagram and find images of the food and try and piece together this puzzle that was a menu. And so Mr. Yum first started putting QR codes on menus back in November 18 when everyone thought QR codes were absolutely dead. Um, and it was all about bringing the menu to life and showing um, yeah, showing customers what the food what the food looked like before they had to make a decision about what to order. Then the ordering and payment we always knew would come pretty quickly after as a um, you know a way to improve the customer experience and kind of close that gap. Has the experience of COVID changed what Mr Yum is? It's changed so much. When I was reflecting, you know, recently about this, the category like this entire category has just exploded around the world um you know contactless ordering as a phrase we really try and stay away from because we feel like hospitality isn't about being contactless and saying that it's contactless has a very short lifespan and the product isn't about creating you know distance between hospitality and their customers it's about improving the customer experience so we feel like contactless is almost like the anti um, phrase to what we want it to be um, but but the reality of the phrase is that it had an application a utility application that it now has a you know a, a mass market application that it didn't have before and pre-covid it really was an early adopter market we would go you know the sales sales cycles were long um you'd chat to someone and they would be interested and they definitely think it was the way of the future but the urgency and the willingness to go first was hard um and we definitely like Australian Venue Co we've now rolled out to 170 of their pubs they went first they rolled out all of their sites in um their ABC sites 50 of them by December 2019 so they were very much ahead of the curve um, but they were early adopters and it took in the pub market them rolling out at big scale for other people to um to to, to look at that and think it was a worthwhile opportunity or something to look at so look we've been really fortunate not just us but everyone in this category it's completely exploded exploded and usually it takes hundreds of millions of dollars have to like like pump a lot of money into a category to move it from early adopted to mass market. And we've just been really fortunate that the industry has gone through a big digital transformation kind of overnight and um, that we had a good product at the right time. You mentioned the word contactless doesn't really suit hospitality and dining is about the entire experience interacting with wait staff, absorbing yourself in that moment. How does the use of technology and less contact keep that atmosphere we go out for? It's a really, it's actually the number one uh, objection that we get in Mr. Yum around, you know, I can't see it in my venue. Um, you know, we've always had a great customer experience and our staff are trained to, interact with customers um does this put a barrier between them and the customers and it's been this has been our it's been it's been really really exciting to see how restaurants have actually managed to do both um technology isn't here to replace interaction it's here to create it's here to be an enabler of more quality interaction taking an order and taking payment can be some of the most administrative parts of a wait staff member's job and it's true that they would have usually used that opportunity to interact but those in, in opportunities definitely still exist you just have to do it with a little bit more intent um, and the way that the restaurants that have implemented it well they'll come back you know they'll they'll host them they'll tell them what to do they'll ask them if they've used Miss Yum before in a lot of um, venues and they'll 
encourage them to have a browse but then they'll say like we'll come back you know we'll come back in five minutes and you can still ask me questions about the menu so they don't leave them complete to, completely to their own but some people want to interact other people don't really want to interact is another part of it um, and some people want to interact the first time but then for follow-up drinks and if they want to order three more Aperol spritz like they just want to be able to order that when they when they want to order that as opposed to needing to flag down someone each time and interrupt their conversation so I think um it's a it's a big it's definitely a big um skill to be able to and we think the hosp we think front of house is going to become and what we're seeing now is that it's becoming more specialized and that skill set is becoming less administrative and actually becoming more about hospitality than remembering an order walking up to the post punching it in um and doing that time and time again during the night when you can be spending all of that time with customers. So if you didn't have to do any of the admin, your job would be just to be hospitable. Food and restaurants create memories for us. Do you, do you have any fond food memories from family or in restaurants from growing up? So, yeah, I grew up in Singapore. I was born there, a country that's really known for its love for food. I don't know if you've visited, but um, it's definitely one of the highlights of, of being in Singapore and it's a very multicultural uh, melting pot, which is, I think, why the food there is really special. Um, one thing that I really love about Singapore and its food scene over there is friends would go out really late for, the, for like supper, as they call it, um, which is a late night venture to like the neighborhood hawker center um, for a 10, 30, 11 p.m. post dinner snack and probably a beer as well. Um, and it's a, like it's a much more late night culture than um, probably the food scene over here, but the hawker centers are open till real late and you can sit out because it's 28 degrees most days. You can sit out in the outdoor and be really comfy. Um, from a home perspective, I also grew up in a family that enforced dinner at the table every night and no TV dinners. <laughs> um, and it was definitely a time to, even if it only went for 20, 30 minutes, um, interact with your siblings and interact with your parents um, and have conversations about, a lot of conversations about business. Like my, my family... Um, have always had their own businesses. So that's the way that I grew up. And um, I think looking back, I learned a lot. I learned probably the most around the dinner table than any other interactions that I had with my parents and with my family. And a lot of those dinner conversations have, um, yeah, made me who I, who I am today. So yeah, heaps of really fond memories when it comes to hanging out with friends in hawker centres and, um, and and conversations around the dinner table, which I think are things that we still want to bring into Misty Yum today. What's dining in restaurants like for you now, given that you have this platform? Does it, How does it make you feel <laughs> when you're in a restaurant or cafe and you use the Misty Yum platform? I think two, twofold. Um, I think it's uh, your way less, as a, as a consumer, you're, you feel more empowered to make decisions about what you want to order, what you want to eat, what you want to drink. I think um, a big part of why Mysterium exists or how it came to be was we would go to like an Italian restaurant or a French restaurant or a Spanish restaurant and half the ingredients on the page would make very little sense. Um, and I'd be struggling like, is this, you know, is this like a cured meat or is it a cheese? Like what what is this? And then you go and... And then you go on Google and you're trying to figure out like what you want to eat. Um, but I think lot, like in, in, the, um, in the ordering and decision making process, you're now empowered because you've got more information. You've got visuals and people are visually led that you can make better decisions. And there's no FOMO. You're not sitting there when your friends get their food going. I wish I, I, wish I ordered that instead. And you know exactly what you're going to get, which is kind of nice. Um, of course, there's, there's a surprise element that's nice as well, and um, lots of restaurants do do that well. I think from a from a staff perspective, I've re like you can't help yourself but be incredibly observant about the way that they have uh, adapted the technology and whether you think they 
like having a piece of technology like Miss Diab in place or whether they preferred it the old school way. Um, and we, we, we can't help ourselves, but like ask some pretty tough questions to staff that are using Miss Diab or, or any other platform. Like, what do you, um, and, and, and I th the number one feedback, and this is common across the board, is I didn't think that this would work in our venue, but our customers are loving it and it's made our life so much easier because we don't have to, like the stress of hanging around and make sure you look at every single table to ensure that they've got what they need and always be attentive and always be um, there for them, I think especially in a time like right now when the like the biggest challenge that restaurants are having in our conversations with our customers is that they're struggling to find good staff because so many of them have gone back home um, from an international international staff perspective. So I think they are str like a, a lot of them are understaffed right now and just knowing that your customers can help themselves means that you don't have to, you can serve them drinks fast and that, and you can interact with them when you go and bring them their drinks or bring them their food, um, but you don't have to stress about whether they're going to be able to place an order because they can do that on their own. Well, Melbourne and Victoria has only just started to open up again. They've had a, um, the toughest restrictions in Australia um, during this pandemic. And But Mr Yum has been included in a Victorian government rebate program that's just been announced, which means hospitality and entertainment businesses can get $1,200 for implementing the product and there's a couple of products as well that are part of this uh, rebate program can you can you tell us about this yeah for sure it's been yeah it only got launched a couple of days ago really exciting Victorian government um, it's a digital adaptation grant so it's about getting businesses to try new products and encouraging to do, them to do so by uh, giving them a rebate of 1200 bucks to give it a go the or most awesome thing about it is there's like six providers involved, Shopify, um, Squarespace, Zero Myob and Square um, and Mr. Yum. And we were the only, A, like Melbourne, you know, Melbourne startup to be included in the program, but then B, also the only product that is specialised in this category um, and, and, and for hospitality and entertainment, which means that the industry get to use a product that's actually fit for purpose and good for them. So you get 1200 bucks for, um, for implementing Mr. Yum, or if you're an existing customer, you can try a new product um, and also get the rebate. So it's available for new customers and existing customers trying something new. So adapting or growing in some way from in a digital capacity is what the government wants to see. Um, yeah, it was definitely a bit of a struggle getting in included in that. I think um, lots of startups, looked at it and um, they first announced that Shopify and Square were the two that were going to be included. Uh, my co-founder Kerry worked every angle pretty much to get us included in that program and just good to see that the government listened and <laughs> and um, and understood that Shopify isn't the best platform for uh, a dine-in QR code ordering system and that um, we yeah, that the hospitality industry needs something that's specific for them. So it's, um, yeah, it's a good little head start. The digital age is a little confusing for so many in the industry because they're normally focused on running restaurants and there's been so many different sort of platforms launched, which is also quite confusing for everyone. But do you have some uh, success stories of restaurants or cafes that you could tell us about that sort of show the impact that Mr Yum platform can make? Yeah, for sure. I uh, I think that there's a few. There's definitely a few. Uh, the like in the pub category, the Australian venue co see a twenty eight percent increase in spend. They now have customer data that have opted in, and they can get them to come back, and they're retargeting, remarketing on Facebook with voucher codes that they can use in Misty Arm and get those customers to return. So that's one long standing example that's been you know, 12 months of data and the increase in spend has been strong and they've got now pubs doing 100% of their orders pretty much through Misty Yum. Um, yeah, the the grounds um, of Alexander is a good cafe example. They have said that they sell more second coffees and we looked at some numbers um, 
and they see like an eight dollar average higher spend because of the product um so yeah and, and the customer feedback's been all around really really positive um for them and they do very high volume through it they use the guest check-in as well so the contact tracing guest check-in so does the abc group so you scan the qr code do your contact tracing check-in and then you're straight onto the menu which really helps with that uptake um we had a venue that just went live with with misty um it's the um the common ground project which is a, a mulberry group um not-for-profit farm to table kind of concept um 20 minutes out of Geelong and the manager there he mentioned to us because of this staffing um challenges that the the that the, the restaurant industry is facing right now it's, just, it's everyone it's not just like they're all telling us that they're calling each other and like struggling for um struggling to to high um like experienced experienced people um he mentioned that on days where he's been understaffed he's been able to service a whole like outdoor area of 70 people which is the maximum capacity right now by himself with a product like Misty Arms it's not it's not that he wants to do that but he's like when I when I am really understaffed and I can't um do I can't I can't do much better um it's been a total lifesaver and the, the outdoor area concept because it's typically so much further from the tills and it's a, a much more sprawled area compared to having more people indoor compared like in on under normal circumstances they've been able to service a bigger area with people more spread out um socially distanced with the same number of staff as what they had before um so that you know of course they can make the numbers work and probably the other really cool example is we've been working with Mr Miyagi um all through covid and they've been doing pick up and delivery um, via Mr. Yam. They've managed to get their delivery orders down to like 8.5%, 8. 8. something like that, um, under 10% with Mr. Yam and our delivery partners. And that's, you know, as compared to the 30% that they would pay on Uber or Deliveroo or any of those platforms. And they do that by having flexibility around increasing the uh, minimum order value for delivery on Misty Yam. So on Misty Yam, if you're a restaurant, you can say, I don't want to do deliveries for under 50 or 60 bucks, for example. Um, you know, charge a customer $5 for delivery. The delivery costs a fixed fee. It's a fixed fee delivery compared to a percentage delivery with our partners. And um, yeah, get your delivery costs down to 10%, 15%, which we think is long-term more sustainable than the 30 to 35% via the delivery apps. And you get to own that customer data, right? Like all of that, all of the data that you've got, all of the relationship that you have with a delivery customer is yours. Um, and that relationship, if something doesn't go well, like you can make, you can make that experience good. Um, whereas on Uber Eats or Deliver or any of those platforms, really like you don't even get their details, you don't even get their name, there's no way to um, have an interaction with them. You mentioned that Mr. Yama is kind of the right product at the right time and it's been a crazy year. Um, but what's next for Mr. Yam? So much to do. Um, yeah, there's we're definitely feeling like the industry is uh, maturing a lot in this category and people understand QR codes now and people understand how to order and pay. So our next big evolution is in bringing out some, you know, marketing and loyalty products to get customers to return. And we've got um, some test cases out there and some experiments that we're running at the moment. Um, the other big opportunity for us is global. So as an Australian startup, what do we need to do to get the product into other markets um, and given the whole world is going through the same thing at the same time there's a really big opportunity there to look at evolving the product globally. So how do people uh, get in touch and um, to get involved and find out more information? You can go on our website it's probably the easiest it's mrum.com or if it's um, yeah, if you want to get in touch with me the best thing to do is probably reach out on, on LinkedIn. It's just Kim Teo. Um, and if you search Mr. Yam, you'll find me. I do look at my messages. I might 
in the end give you my email and and and, and direct traffic to emails because LinkedIn can get get a little bit crazy with the messages. Um, but yeah, happy to connect with people in the industry and you know other um, whether whether you own a restaurant or a pub or a bar. Um, yeah, happy to learn about what you're doing and um, maybe you're not in Australia and that's part of our adventure too. So I'd love to connect with you too. Well, Kim, congratulations on the platform that you have created and um, good luck with everything. And it's good to see something uh, helping the hospitality industry through this pretty horrific time. Um, Please keep in touch and we'll talk again soon. Thanks so much, Hark. It was great to be here and we're excited to be on this journey with the industry. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of Australia's HOSPO community, suppliers and producers in search of hope during this pandemic. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.